this should be a relatively fun assignment. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a shallow space But we're going to use atmosphere or atmospheric perspective. And um, by now, you should already know what atmospheric perspective is. And if you don't, I'll give you a quick summary. So let's say you had a, a 10 value scale, which is one of the more common methods. Usually we say 10 is your darkest dark. and one is your lightest light, five is halfway between, and so on. So the way atmospheric works is based on the idea that contrast moves things forward. So that means that the biggest value range is going to be in the foreground. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that the foreground has to be an even spread of all these values. It can be mostly dark, it can be mostly middle, it can be mostly light. It's just that it has to contain the full range. So it must contain a, a white and a dark. For the middle ground, you're going to take any five values that are next to each other and assign that to the middle ground. And nothing is going to go outside of that value range in the middle ground. This can move up and down. It could be all the way to 10, it could be all the way to 1, but the important thing is, is that distance stays the same. Now in the background, right, it's going to be 2 to 3 values, depending on what you have back there and how you need to differentiate your information. You can slide that up and down the value scale anywhere you need to, to create a proper um, set of atmospheric perspective. The back of your drawing is going to be the background, right? Then you're going to have the middle ground, and then you're going to have the foreground. And you can think of it as three sort of areas, registers, or little overlapping planes, right? What you can do is assign a dominant, a predominant value to each of these. Light, medium, and dark. So if you do medium in the foreground, most of your values will be right around five, but you're still going to have the, the one and the 10 represented off of your value scale. You could have a dark middle ground, uh, medium background, light foreground, whatever. You can play around with the combination, but you need to pick one. So that's our little equation for this assignment. Part of it needs to be observational. You, you know, you can use some reference to help you along, but I think you do need to like go and actually look at stuff and draw stuff. Give yourself options. So you want to have like five options of compositions. And these five options, you do, you do them small. This big to this big. Choice of format is up to you. And when you do this, I want you to focus on like big, broad shapes and composition. And the point of this is to find interesting shapes. I took a couple of reference photos. The first one is a, uh, a kitchen sink, and it's kind of broken up like this. In the background, there's a curvy sink right here. And you can see the edge of the countertop down here, which will help us. There's like some objects here. Inside the sink, it's subdivided, and there's a couple of dishes in the sink. There's a large-ish faucet thing with a towel dangling off of it. Okay, and then there's like little vase over here. This line right here represents my foreground, all the objects that are this way, right? So that means in the front, 
I have to have the 1 to 10 value range. Okay, next is my middle ground, right? I've got a pot of flowers right here. I've got a pot of flowers behind here. orchid or something and another epically big pot of flowers with all kinds of like leaf leaves coming off of it right takes up this whole area and I've got like another little bowl or something right here and that's a hanging plant so that kind of like goes up and does the whole hanging plant thing so this segment represents my middle ground, right? Everything on the plane of the floor that's right here. So this is my middle ground. And so I must restricted, restrict the value range at some point. And then in the back, I've got my background, largely consisting of basically just windows. Actually, the middle ground, I think I'll do light. Background, we'll do me medium. And the foreground, we'll do dark. Remember, the dark doesn't necessarily mean that I'm only using dark values. It means that it's going to predominantly read as dark. So the kitchen sinks down here. Right? Inside the sink is pretty dark. Especially right around the edge. And then this whole area is fairly dark. It's got a dark edge right here that kind of echoes this dark. And then I've got kind of a medium value here because it's white. And I'm going to bump this whole value down into like somewhere in this range. So the cutting board and this little, there's a little highlight here that I want to preserve. dark inside by the cutting board here. Everything's kind of like below five and if I really want to push it I probably ought I probably ought to push it just a little darker, right? I'm getting like real real into it as far as the darkness. Because I mean it is a black countertop. So really kind of pushing this down. I can do like a little gradient kind of. And I can put some light things back there. The other thing too is that I'm getting like um, a direct overhead light on this stuff. So a lot of these objects are going to kind of like break into that for me. And so I'm going to leave a lot of these objects pretty light. And then, um, but then their shadows are going to be kind of like in that range.
And so what I'm going to do is over the background, I'm basically just going to go over the whole thing. So I push the background into the middle. Um, and then I can use like an additional value here or there to help differentiate. I thought a toilet would be really funny. So what I what I can do first, since I'm looking down, is I'm gonna kind of just divide up the space. Okay. And then my toilet shape sits on the ground here. Um, then the bowl is here. Tank kind of comes up from the ground here. seats here. Now when you're planning this out, you know, it doesn't have to look good. It just has to look good enough to get you a plan together. And I can tweak things and move things around um, to use some compositional tools that I might know about and so on. Okay, then I've got a little toilet paper holder over here, and I'm going to be sure to include, and I can use a little bit of, you know, floor to kind of help things along. Okay, so foreground, middle ground, background. What's in the foreground, there's like a plant up here, so the plant has like leaves and dangleys around. So. Foreground is this area, right? And pretty much just this corner is foreground. So, um, thankfully, it's all very light and there's some abrupt shadows in there. The tank itself transitions into the middle ground, which is going to be like largely medium values, which also corresponds with the fact that it's a white toilet right? And nothing is particularly dark on here. And there's a shadow back here. So the wall itself is pretty, it's pretty medium. Uh, and it goes to, or like medium dark going to actual dark. So by the time we get to here, we're headed towards the actual dark in the background. This whole section back here is going to be pretty dark. So there's like a funky shadow shape over here that I want to get. And toilet paper roll kind of belongs to the mid-ground because as, as I'm looking at my picture plane, this this sort of mid-ground, like this area is the background, like right here. And maybe a little bit of the floor. So the toilet paper roll is going to be important. And I'm going to have to like, you know, remember to, to make that turn and be around. I have like a little thing on there. And it's largely going to be mid values, right? So the shadow needs to have an interesting shape. There's going to be leaf shadows and so on. Just a little reminder there. And then the porcelain is going to get kind of a mid-tone for the most part on it. Then there's going to be a shadow of the toilet. So what I want to do for the background is I might not want to use 10, but I want to use like 7 and 8, 9, maybe 7, 8, 9, and uh, that range, and just bump the whole background down like pretty far. 
as I get into the background. Even though there's going to be like a shadow, I only want it to be like a subtle difference. So I can get brave and get like real heavy with this stuff back here to make it background. Just have a slight difference then transition up. And here I'm in mid ground so I can lighten up and go into medium. And then the floor again. That's all kind of mid ground. There's some shadows under here too. Shadow on the bowl and so on. Okay, there you go. So that's a plan for that. And um, it does make use of atmospheric perspective, right? And you can kind of see what's happening with the limited value range in the background, a slightly expanded middle value range, with nothing really bright in the middle ground, and then a super dark next to super bright in the foreground. And that's gonna kind of like pull things along and make, make it seem like there's more depth in the image than there actually is, because we're using a basically atmospheric perspective, which is a high depth technique, and we're applying it to a low depth situation, just to be funny, basically. And uh, it should be an enjoyable uh, project for you. Um, so after this, basically, you're just going to go through and use the other drawing principles that we talked about to execute it.